Thomas the tank engine was a little blue engine who always tried to be really useful. He and all his friends lived on the island of Sodium. Life on the island of Sodor was very peaceful and happy. But on this beautiful island where trains could talk and the railroad was really reliable and right on time, trouble was brewing. Sir Topham Hatt, the railroad director, was going on a vacation. Mr. Conductor, who traveled from place to place in a shower of gold dust, was coming to help him out. I have to go and meet Mr. Conductor, Thomas said. He's going to take care of us while Sir Topham Hatt is away. I think we can take care of ourselves. <laughs> engine raced past them. Get out of my way, you blue puffballs, the diesel growled. What was that? asked Gordon nervously. That was a problem, Thomas said as the diesel screeched away. That's Diesel 10. Sir Topham had sent him to help us steam engines, but Diesel 10 is behaving as though he hates us. I think he's a really scary engine. Pa, grumbled Gordon. Really useful engines like us have to be brave, little Thomas. Thomas agreed. He couldn't help feeling frightened. Meanwhile, Diesel 10 was planning to get rid of the steam engines once and for all. He wanted to run the railroad. That night, Diesel 10 sneaked up to the engine shed and threatened Mr. Conductor with his jagged claw. Make the most of tonight, Twinkle Toes, is Diesel 10, because you won't like tomorrow. Mr. Conductor had another problem, too. I've suddenly lost all my sparkle, he sighed to Thomas. To get it back, I must find some more gold dust. Thomas and the other engines knew they had to help Mr. Conductor find the source of the magic gold dust. While the boss, Sir Topham Hat, is away, we cats will play, per Diesel 10 to his pals. Splatter and Dodge gulped. We're going to make life miserable for those steaming heaps of trash on wheels, Diesel 10 continued. This island doesn't need them. It needs diesels. There's no use for steam engines these days. They're history. But what about Mr. Conductor, asked Splatter. Isn't he going to stop us, Dodge asked. Mr. Conductor needs his magic gold dust to keep an eye on us, snickered Diesel 10. And I know he can't, because he's just run out. A door opened on Diesel 10's cab roof, and out came his huge metal claw. I'll take care of all of them with this, said Diesel 10. He lifted his claw high above them, but then it dropped and hit him on the head. I don't think he meant to do that, Splatter and Dodge said to each other. Little did the Diesels know that Toby the tram engine had overheard their plans. Toby told the other engines. Then he followed the Diesels to see what they were going to do next. The Diesels were plotting to destroy the magic buffers that led to Mr. Conductor's magic railroad. We don't know where the entrance to the magic railroad is, and we don't know which are the right buffers to destroy, said Diesel 10 to Splatter and Dodge. So we'll have to destroy all of them. Toby knew he had to do something to stop Diesel 10. I've got to distract him, thought Toby. Clang! Toby rang his bell as loud as he could. It's the old teapot, shouted Diesel 10. Smash him! Diesel 10 tried to touch Toby with his claw, but he knocked over a pile of scrap right onto his own tracks. Diesel 10's path was blocked. Did you mean to do that? Asked Splatter and Dodge. Diesel 10 growled. 
I always knew that I do. Diesel Tim was mad when he found out that Thomas had traveled the magic railroad to bring back Lady the Golden Engine. Lady was the source of the magic gold dust. She could help Mr. Conductor foil Diesel Ten's plans. Diesel Ten chased Lady, but Thomas raced between them. All three engines headed towards a dangerous old viaduct. Lady crossed the old viaduct. Stones began to fall. When Thomas crossed the viaduct, more stones fell, and a big gap appeared in the track. Thomas jumped the gap just in time. But Diesel 10 couldn't stop, and he tumbled far below onto a barge filled with sludge. Lady was safe, and there would always be plenty of gold dust. You're a really useful engine, Gordon told Thomas. Peep, peep, Thomas said, and puffed home in 